Hey, so because I just put up some of my SK-1 uh, contact instruments on my itch page just to see if I liked that platform, um, I thought I'd go in and make them in Reaper plugins. Uh, and that's probably too much work. I looked into it. And I won't be able to make them exactly the same, but if you are uh, not feeling like downloading contact, which is understandable, I'm going to make some stuff. Let's check it out. So here's um, the place where you can download these. And I think I included the um, the actual like WAV files in here. If I didn't, someone let me know and I'll put them up there. So um, let's get into it here. Um, I've got a track in my Reaper project with um, an instance of resample o 5000, which is your stock Reaper plugin that's your just general sampler. Um, I'm going to be dragging these files in from my Media Explorer, which I have open over in the other side. It's not visible on the main monitor, but here's the Media Explorer. And here's some of those samples. Um, I've got a ton of these, and I will pick, maybe I'll pick this one. Cool. So I'm going to try making a sampler instrument out of this. And we're going to use um, resample matic to make a multi-sampler. So to do that, um, basically, you can drag and drop from your Windows Explorer or your Media Explorer. And you can drag these into this black space on the sampler. When you do that, uh, this black button will let you uh, audition a sample. Uh, which you can do with the right arrow in the Media Explorer or double clicking in Media Explorer. Well, double clicking actually brings it into your into your editor, um, like so. We don't want that. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I hit Obeno off here because I want my keyboard to control this, and it's going to be really frustrating if I can't let go and have um, have the sample stop. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arm this track to record. Um, I have on my default settings in my custom template um, input from MIDI because I use lots of MIDI instruments. You probably don't have that, and if you don't, you go in here to input MIDI. And if you don't know which what your MIDI devices are, just pick all MIDI inputs, all channels. Um, there's other good tutorials on on choosing MIDI channels, and you probably don't need to do that. And if you do need to do that, you'll probably already know how. Um, it's great for other hardware instruments controlled from the same keyboard for having multiple layers and different parts of your keyboard, stuff like that. So if that's a thing you want, that's um, a thing to look into. Just not on my channel because I'm not like the super expert on it. So um, now that I've got this record armed, any key on my keyboard is going to trigger that sample. Um, and that's great if you've got like a drum sound, but in this case, I've got a pitched sound that I want to um, essentially hear the the um, pitch that I'm playing on the keyboard, right? I think these are all mislabeled, so whatever. I made these a long time ago. Um, so I want my F key to play this F. And to do that, um, I can go here into Note Semitone Shifted. And I can adjust the pitch start to, uh, what is that one? Is four? Oh, no. To match up with that first note. And I'm doing that by ear. Um, if you don't feel like your ear is good enough to do that, you can use an, uh, tuner I'll try and find um, find this and note that some samples are going to have a lot of harmonic content which is going to cause the tuner to think we're in a different octave um, and you know you can use your ear to decide which octave feels right or what I do is just whatever part of the keyboard I want to play on for this particular instrument I like playing bass sounds in the middle of my keyboard because I like playing right hand bass because I like playing synth bass and using my left hand for mod wheel. So I kind of want my bass sounds way over here on the keyboard when some people that are coming from more of a piano background are going to want their bass sounds over here on the left. So um, this is now going to play the same sample. Uh, pitch shifted everywhere on the keyboard. It's going to be kind of gnarly up here, um, but we'll get to why that is and how we can solve that later. Um, so. Next step here is to figure out how to make this sample continue playing after um, after the sample ends. And to do that, what we want to do is hit this loop button here. 
the looping here is probably going to be the biggest um, uh, shortcoming of the Reaper sampler compared to uh, a nap white contact. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of extra options for looping, like um, bouncing back and forth. Um, but we can deal live with that. Uh, basically, what we can do here is to go on this edge. You'll see that I'm the cursor is changing ever so slightly here. And I'm going to bring it over so um, this dark yellow line uh, is overlapping with the end of that sample. This here is a crossfade. So this is going to cause the end of it to fade out and the beginning of it to fade in. So this sounds like this right now. So it's going to fade the sample back in over and over again. I want the transient from the sample to only happen at the very beginning. So I'm going to start the loop point somewhere else. And you can kind of do this to taste. Um, I am also going to adjust this um, decay here so um, that I get a little bit of a volume boost at the beginning. You can do this in extreme ways if you want, which can sound really good. Something like that sounds pretty fine for now. And again, we're just going to be stuck with that weirdness. That's just the nature of this. And I've got some tools to um, counterbalance that problem, but uh, they're not perfect. Again, that's kind of the reason why people use expensive, fancy samplers um, in most situations is because they have tools to take care of problems like that. We could also use longer samples. These are all really short samples because I wanted to make this sound super lo-fi. Okay, so this sounds like this now. If I play chords. Um, probably blowing out the speaker, huh? Sorry. I have that pretty loud. I'm going to turn this down for now. <laughs> um, okay. This is all great, except that this is just one sample on the whole keyboard, which is going to cause um, the really low end stuff to sound weird and the really high end stuff to sound super shrill and horrible. Um, so I'm going to grab some more of these samples um, in my media explorer, and I'm going to bring them into more instances of resample. Um, and I'm doing that just holding control, clicking and dragging. And this one, now I'm going to bring in um, this uh, same library, same sample octave down. Um, I'm going to bypass that first one. Actually, let's see here. I want it to be this note. So keep that note in your head. And then we're gonna add 12 to this for an octave. So minus 53 plus 12 minus 41, is that right? So that compared to that. Here, all those are the same note, but the second one here has a lot more high frequency content. And uh, that's because it was recorded in that register. So um, we aren't using the computer to try and uh, estimate uh, what the harmonic content should be. Um, in this sampler, I don't remember if it actually even does estimate. Um, let's just take a look at a, a EQ so we can just see what the frequency spectrum that is represented is. Compare that to this. Oh yeah, so it doesn't even make up for it. So we just have missing content there. So it's essentially just a, a heavy filter. Um, okay. And now what we need to do is decide which notes these are playing. And uh, the simple version of this would be have this note um, be starting at, you know, somewhere around where it is and working its way up or down a certain amount of octaves um, or pitches. Or if we wanted to have a separate sample for each note, you could just select one. And in this case, I want um, to start with this lower one. And I want to make sure that that particular note is triggering the sound. And I can choose which keys on the keyboard or which uh, buttons on your MIDI controller are going to trigger that sound right in here. So, oh my God, does that really automatically adjust it? <laughs> Um, 
on the wrong one. Shoot. So apparently, um, <laughs> Uh, I have, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that this would happen. <laughs> so I fixed it here. Um, apparently we should do the um, the note that triggers the sound first <laughs> and then do the pitch uh, later if we need to, because uh, I don't need to adjust the pitch start if I adjust the note first. And that's my mistake. So this note and here, I'm going to have this travel up maybe an octave from here. So 41 to 53, 52 actually, um, because I want it to end and trigger the next sound after that. So this one here is gonna start at 53. And then I'm gonna have to adjust here because I made that mistake. And now if I play on my keyboard, the sample, cleanly changes at that octave point. Um, it still has a little bit of an obvious uh, transition. So what we can do to solve that is to add even more samples in between. Um, I have some, a couple more notes. I have a C uh, and I have an A. Uh, so I'm gonna make more of these instances here. And this one here, I'm gonna choose um, A, Let's do, oops, I've got A2, okay. And that A2 is going to essentially work the same way. Um, I'm going to make this A2, let's go up to A2. I could be doing this math in my head, I should be doing that. 46, right? No, 45. Um, and uh, basically, this should work here. Okay, cool. That seems to work. And uh, what I want to do is to find that F. What is this? Ooh. That's wrong. I've got this off by an octave, the calculation. So the file names are incorrect. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so I'm going to go minus 12 here. So 33. And then... Cool, that seems to work. Okay, so now this F is going to move um, just from the F up a few notes to the A. So 46. Oh, 46, right? 45, 44. So now you can see this one triggering when the MIDI, uh, when the MIDI controller hits and then this one hits too. So it looks like I'm, I'm playing both of them at the same time. Um, and I want that to not happen. So this one here needs to go from F to G and this one needs to start on the A. Ooh, what have I done? This one needs to... Thirty-three. Oh my God. Forty-five, and then this needs to be. There we go. Okay, now they're actually working. So I had these um these uh, mislabeled. Cool. And then I've got a um. C here. Where'd that C go? Or actually, I've got a C sharp actually. So C sharp. Um, we'll bring this one in. 
<laughs> That's cool sounding. Um, and we will basically do the same thing here. So we want this to trigger on a C sharp, uh, which is going to be, uh, 41 and 44, 45, 52. And So this is off by an octave again. Um, oh, because I copied the one that was off by an octave. So I want that to end before it gets to that C sharp. So 45 to 50, uh, 48. Okay, and then this one's gonna start on 49. To 52. And something about that I don't like. Um, I think that I'm in the wrong order here. Original sound. Um, F, where's the F2 one? F2, A2. Oh, the A2 one is an octave down. That's the problem. Okay, I'm going to replace this one with the A3 sample, and I'm going to correct this zero. Okay. Okay, that all seems to work, um, except for one little problem, which is that these samples start late. So this sample looks like it starts a little bit late, so we need to move our starting point. And we need to move our ending point so that the loop actually loops a sampled section. Looks like the same problem exists here. Let's do that real quick. Okay, that seems to work. And then this one here. Looks like it starts in the right spot, so up to E3. So I've got a full octave of the keyboard now. And that seems to work pretty well. Um, for the purpose of keeping this video somewhat short, I'm going to move on from here. You could imagine continuing this throughout the rest of the, of the piano keyboard, um, but to make this sort of similar to the contact instruments that I've got, I'm gonna use an EQ, I'm gonna use a saturation, um, and I'm going to use a um, reverb and a delay. And I'm gonna just use the stock reaper plugins here. Um, and let's uh, bypass these until I get to them. The um, EQ, I noticed that these samples have kind of a lot of low end, so I'm going to, and they're not, it's not a bass sound, so I'm gonna filter up to 80 hertz. Um, and that's gonna stop some of the low end buildup that'll happen. Um, and then I'm gonna filter some high end as well, uh, just because I want them to sound pretty lo fi. So I'm gonna filter up to maybe 8K. How's that sound? Pretty good. There's a ton of mid range in these as well. Um, so I'm tempted to do some type of cuts in here, but I'm gonna wait uh, a little bit. Okay. Um, the saturation is a little bit much actually. Uh, I think I might get rid of that. I don't need it. And I think I'm gonna cut around 500. It looks like that's, that build up is partially because of the notes I'm choosing to play. But it looks like there's still kind of a lot of that um, lower mid range. Thank you. 
this one, I think I might actually allow it to go lower than that. But no, we'll just leave it where we are for now. Okay, that's good for now. Um, I'm gonna bring in the reverb. I am using um, settings that are not default. Um, this is the default impulse response though. So this is coming from the sweet verbo preset and I've made some changes to it. Uh, let's start from the sweet verbo preset since that's in Reaper. So it's pretty intense. Um, bring the wet down. Just bring in a little bit of that. And we can add a filter to it because it's just taking too much space. Um, I like to high pass my reverb. I'm going to go to somewhere in the mid range since there's a ton of mid range already. I'll go all the way to 500. And then I'm going to low pass up to um, what I do with the EQ around 8K. So I'm going to go a little bit further than that. That sounds decent. Um, and I'm going to reverb actually after the delay. So the delay is going to have a little bit more feedback. Um, I want to hear more than the first one. Let's go maybe minus. Uh, that's fine actually. Um, again, filtering. Let's do. Let's do. Let's go super hard with this. I like really low-fi delays. High pass filter. Um, I just don't want low end. Oops. Yeah, maybe I'll go further. Yeah, that sounds cool. Okay, um, a little bit less reverb. And then I've got this sound. And um, I'm going to mute my microphone here so that, well, I'm going to mute my speakers so that you can actually hear it because I'm not in headphones. So that's uh, what it sounds like right now. And then if you wanted to keep this, as long as you keep your file path the same, you can uh, save the track as a template. Um, and I am not going to do that right now because if I save these as templates, I want them to basically exist as a template that I want to use, which would involve the whole keyboard instead of just one octave of it. So um, just, as a reference, because I actually didn't listen to these before I came, I came in to do this video, I'm going to pull up contact. Um, and I want to see uh, what this sounds like compared to the contact instrument that I made a few years ago, um, because I wouldn't be surprised if it is totally different. Um, so while that loads, let's think about um, some other changes we could make here. The Reaper sampler, because you can't do a sort of a ping pong sample uh, where it plays the sample backwards, uh, certain sounds like this one that are going to be pads might end up having that repeating attack, uh, which you could try to squish with a limiter or a compressor. Um, you could uh, add some type of uh, parallel distortion that might be interesting. Um, let's see, where's my... Um, SK1. This one was called. Easy. It's called this, I think. Okay. So this is the one I had. Um, and this is my contact instrument. Oh, I have that. I haven't moved over a ton.
So it's actually relatively similar. Um, it looks like I filtered the contact instrument quite a bit more. Um, so, uh, hey, that's not bad. Um, is it worth the effort? I don't know. Um, it's again, it's sort of like a um, <laughs> worth the effort if you are broke. And I had the inspiration for making um, an I'm broke video was just being generally broke. So um, I have been unable to afford a new synth lately. And I was thinking about uh, alternatives that wouldn't cost me any extra money. <laughs> and this is what I was thinking about. And uh, I'm actually very pleased with how it turned out. So anyway um that's all i'm gonna do with this for today uh just because i already did this work um i mostly wanted to see if this was going to be reasonable and if i could add uh some sampler instruments to my offerings online and it looks like i probably can if i want to put the work into it so um hop over to my <laughs> to my instruments and download them and send me a donation and i'll be really inspired to do more <laughs> thanks for watching i'll see you all next time